Who is the biggest trash talker? Probably be like Bobby Portis. Wow. Really? I've seen him say some crazy stuff. Are you like, talking to himself or to you, though? He's scoring. He's talking to everybody. Like, I love that. He's talking, he talking to you. Oh, right, right. <laughs> What's up? This is Out of Pocket, the hoop show for real hoop fans. I'm the Jethro Jenkins. I'm Josiah Johnson. I'm Zach Schwartz. We're going to have Nas Reed in a little bit. But first, the Lakers have won some games lately, gentlemen. Oh. I don't know if you saw this. Tonight, as this recording is happening, they beat the Thunder. No LeBron, no AD, no D'Angelo Russell. No Still Shea. got it done. No that Shea. doesn't. John, <laughs> we're talking about the John. Lakers. I mean, you worried about the Royals? Let's give it a stack, man. We, I'm not going to be celebrating understanding the situation with LeBron being hurt, dog. You know what I'm saying? He need a foot being eval- I thought he was out for two to three weeks. Chucks tells us he's being evaluated in two to three weeks. He might, he's, Bro. He, he's evaluating this team. What can yeah. y'all do if without they go on my the, old ass? If they go on a skid, he is not pulling up, nigga. It's over with. You but know if they go saying? on a streak. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Braun we'll back. See. We'll see. We'll see. This was a must-win game. This is a must-win game. Oh, for sure. And they, got, they took care of business. AD didn't play because he was on a rest schedule. This is according to Darvin Ham. Pre-planned. So, okay. Here, can, I, can I just hop in, Zach? Yeah. I was ready to chastise Darvin Ham because I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> Darvin, you had this man playing against the Grizzlies, knowing they got Cardi gang-banged last time by Shannon Sharp, knowing they're going to get their ass busted, all the shit Ja doing. Ja. On the court and off. We got, ooh, ja. Let that man sit. He should have just played the, the Thunder game, but they won, so I'm not going to say anything. But we need this one Friday against your Minnesota Timberwolves with Nas Reed. <sighs> So we need to tire Nas out on this show. Yeah, we got to keep him up. Question late, after bro. question. Nas, I, I, Nas, just one more question. Nas, no, hold on a minute. Sorry, 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 sorry. You're right, right. That's the time, but now just one more question. Just ask here three days. <laughs> right. Yeah. Next thing you know, it's Saturday. Oh, you missed oh, the game, dog. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your favorite color again? We right. said that earlier. Yeah. Just doing our part. You feel what I'm saying? Lakers, not doing too bad. Now that uh, listen, we, this is a segue, Zach. This that is a segue. great a segue. There's another team in town. Chuck, <laughs> another team that hasn't has not won a game since they signed one Russell Westbrook. Zach, Zach we need an interve- intervention here. Your Westbrook slander. Is I'm not slandering. You're I just take, he's, he's crossing the line. You're taking. You he's crossing the line. It feels like you enjoy seeing Russell Westbrook. Not. I'm not. In I'm the happy. Group chat. In a group, don't, 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 don't cap. Nigga. It hurts. In a group I'm chat, not. this nigga be a lot of ha ha ha's, a lot of motherfucking emojis, and that motherfucker crying about emojis. Me. I've never. All seen. I know is, all I know is, first game I'm hearing, oh, Russ is cooking tonight. Russ is, looks so good, and then I, I, oh, I'm in Cabo enjoying myself. I've got a my time in my head, and I go like this. And I put it down because I needed to go see for my own eyes. And I look, and this man has seven turnovers. turnovers. And you have the audacity to tell it. me, oh, he's what else did he have, though? Super nice. What else did he have? 14, 14 assists? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He yeah, had yeah, 14 yeah. points? So eight assists, something like that? 17 points, 14 assists. 17. Yeah, it was a 14, great debut. Two to one assists to turnover ratio now, is the, the gold standard for assists. Now, the most important stat of 21, the night, what? though. No, two to one assists to okay, turnover. Now, uh, You're a proficient ball handler. Joker, two to one assists to turnover ratio. The most Joker's important stat. Two to one? St- I thought he'd be three to one for sure. The most oh, he's closer to three to one. I'm tripping. Okay, okay, Westbrook, okay. two to one. I'm high. Okay, the most high. important <laughs> stat of the night, though, loss. <laughs> And another loss. And then and another loss. loss. And then another loss. <laughs> and then another loss. <laughs> and, both, and they had to go to OT twice. Now, I just want to highlight one other thing that was in the group text that was very funny to me is, is John goes, they benched Westbrook in the fourth. And Chuck goes, they didn't bench him. And we, we both thought I, I we said were that, I said, did they, didn't they bench him in the fourth last game? He Chuck did. was like, no. He was like. <laughs> Chuck, a resident <laughs> Clippers like, fan. He didn't resident bench Clippers him. Fan. He was just on the bench. Nigga. That's a, <laughs> the man wasn't playing. Then he that's played, what he's talking then he, about. But he that's a Clippers the, fan, He said the quote. Oh, he said the, the quote from Tyler that was like. You know, the team had a really good rhythm, so we just, he didn't play in the fourth or, or OT. <laughs> we were like, so he was bad. I, I said, so. No, he was, he just didn't play. <laughs> yeah, that's I what I said. I laughed so I said, hard. so he didn't play, but. but I he, don't, you know, I, Chuck, I'm not rooting against him. Let me course, make that clear. No, of course. Genuinely, this is just me. No, enjoying, you're taking some pride. No, no, no this is I me. I told take, you, save it for March 1st. Save it for March 1st. A lot of teeth, though. I ain't gonna lie, dog. I ain't gonna lie. I'm seeing a lot of teeth, my nigga. Save it for March 1st. I just... <laughs> we worked with Chuck for a while, and I've seen the joy that it's brought him watching us tear our hair out watching Russ play. And... I'm not. Uh, I'm not better than. I'm not going to take the high road. I can't. Never the high have. road is boring. Yeah. Our good friend Dragon Ball Jones always says high road is overrated. Exactly. But somebody somebody explain this to road. me. So when Westbrook departed from the the Lakers, what 13th seed, six man. 
He goes to the fourth seat and is starting. Yeah. What does that tell you? That that team is worse? Is that what you're saying? No. I'm just saying. It's just a different fit. It's just a it different fit. It just wasn't fit. a good fit. <laughs> Him and LeBron were never going to work yeah, together. Yeah. I don't know why they made the trade the to begin court. with. This yeah, is no yeah, Westbrook yeah. slander. Yeah, yeah. He's in a position now. He got PG. He got Kawhi. He got dudes that can shoot. Nor Powell out there just getting buckets, brewing love. If the Clippers slide like all the way to the eighth seed. With Russ, then you can smile. And then are you? What, no, but are you? When do you start pushing the narrative that Russ is doing this like as a sleeper cell sigh out for LeBron? Zach, as you know, I'm an expert in narrative pushing. <laughs> yeah, I will blame PG. I will blame Kawhi. <laughs> I will blame Mason Plumley and Zubak. I will not blame you because you came on the show. Yeah, but according to Chuck, you know. His big plan is that, you know, they'll drop the six <laughs> and play the slide Kings. The six, slide the so they six. Can play. I'm you know saying, saying this now. You don't want to. <laughs> That's what he I'm, told I'm us. That's now. what you said. That's I'm, what he said. I'm telling you right now, you don't want to play that Kings team. Now, it's not because, like, the Kings roster is crazy scary. They have a really good team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you don't want to have to play young, basketball though. in they're Sacramento. Young. Yeah, but they're young. Bro, bro, they haven't had a game, a playoff game in 23 years. So why don't we fans putting the ball in the basket? Uh, 15, 16, 16, I hear you. off trout. Okay, 16. 16, okay, 16. 16 years. God. But I'm like, that's a Sacramento, long time. Sacramento, our nation's oh, capital. They're, they were scary during those Lakers era. During like the Shaq Kobe. But also they the gave, team They gave was Kobe scary. that special pizza the one of the nights. The team was scary, bro. The team was scary. Me? That team was fucking incredible. My baby, Bobby you know Jack. I mean? Bro, you have heard this Sacramento team you're, is you're, great, but they're, bro, they're they're playing better than I think some nights they actually are. I close my eyes and I still hear the cowbells. Oh, yeah. It's that bro, it's you're a right, scary man? place. Yeah, we can talk yeah, about yeah, it yeah, off yeah, the yeah. show. Go talk to my therapist. Sacramento is a scary place, Zach. You don't know about Sacramento. Not one that I would frequent willingly. They got the cow now and the cowbells. Still hears them in his sleep. Jesus Christ. Let's let's you know, let's just pray for Westbrook. Hope it works out. Yeah. Okay, he deserves it. He does deserve Good it. Man. Good man. Honor yeah. the gift. Big fan, big fan, ne big fan. Fellow big UCLA Bruin, never bless me with any honor the gift gear, though. <sighs> mm. Out of my price point. Well, let's go from a vet to, you know, a young guy who's making his name in the league. Our friend John Moran. <laughs> he's, he's made his, <laughs> shit, he's making his name in several leagues. Gee, bro, what, two accusations came out today. What they, what, what were they? The first accusation was yeah. that he- Beat up a teenager. Beat up a teenager. Yeah. The second accusation was that he threatened a security guard at a mall. So the first story was- or the, sorry, too, the, Which is the, a real nigga move. I'll say that. Bomb face? <laughs> hey, pop, yo, bro. Yeah, hey, I mean like, nigga, if, time nigga out. I'm not scared of you if I pop face you, bro. Time if I out. slap the shit out you or I pop face you, nigga, I'm not really tripping time off you, dog. I ain't even, I ain't even bink you. you feel I me? feel like that's- Oz's so, mom was at finish line, dog. Finish line. Who shops at finish line still? <laughs> what are we doing? His son has a some Nike shit? deal. You said what? He's he, he okay. a Nike deal. The son's a most time. wanted some Reeboks, man. <laughs> I don't know. But, <laughs> hey, going to finish line back <laughs> in the Puma day. Clyde. Just a nice classic shoe. You feel what I'm saying? I hope she was trying to get one of them sweatsuits <laughs> they used to have. The <laughs> well, nice yeah, sweatsuits they have. The, the little janky She's fitting ones. get like a Jordan shirt or something like that. Like, <laughs> what we need to say, though, is that man's job. I'm worried. All yeah. jokes aside, bro. Wait, so, so the first story was He's too thirsty to go to jail, bro. He really is like, oh, want to go to jail this bad, dog. Jake Shuttles work. Like it shit, it shit ain't. I mean, you uh, somebody somebody need to get in his ear. He yeah. need an OG. He need an OG to get in his ear. Like, yo, this ain't the way to move. You a god tier basketball player. You have everything in front of you. You know what I mean? The world in front of you. And you out here bullshit. And I'll tell you, Memphis ain't the place to bullshit. My no. nigga. They don't that's fuck a, around in Memphis. A, that's a, I saw somebody put this a fuck around and find out ass city if, I, if there's <laughs> one. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. If, I mean, you know, if so I'm Ja. It ain't sweet, Memphis, dog. If I'm Ja, I would just enjoy some delicious Memphis barbecue. Chill oh, at the crib. Is he delicious? Oh my God. Delicious. <laughs> I'm not trying to get packed up by Memphians. Yeah. I'm not going to yeah, tell the, the truth. Play, that, that I'm not, I'm like, they they seem like a city who doesn't with. want to hear the truth about their barbecue. <laughs> <All right>. So <laughs> delicious. The first thing that happened was the mall incident, right? His mom's at finish line. Was that Gets before the summer, the, the summer pickup? The, oh, yeah, sorry. Summer pickup happened first. But I, it, like, is, I think that one's more interesting, I, the pickup thing. I think so worse than shopping at finish line. I'm sorry. You go no, no, no. Finish, finish, finish. Is that she was in the mall. Who the fuck is shopping at the mall, nigga? When the last time you been to the mall? I, I'll go to the, the mall, mall and wander. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Morning, yeah. Bro. Century City. I don't be mall Century shopping. Mall is a great God, fucking that, mall. That ain't that's a, that ain't, that's a vibe, though. That's not a, just a mall, bro. Oh. You know what I'm saying? But I've been on Central City it's since they had That's not the open daily. air shit. That's the open air shit. But that's a different. Yeah. You know what I mean? Have you been on Memphis Mall? No. 
I'm not. Yeah, but, that's a that's a traditional. <laughs> that's the malls you see. How in many zombie malls they got in Memphis? Last of Us. Yeah, y'all seen that? All hey, the lights are. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I know the reference. I watched that shit. <laughs> there you go. I watched that's, it. That's the type of mall. I'll throw yeah. it back. Is Arcane, it, that motherfucker. Yeah. Musty ass piece of spot. You feel me? What I want to know, since we're talking about Last the of Us, the borrows has some slappers. The Big ZD's fire. Big I, I appreciated the attention to the detail. Yeah. They had the Panda Express in there and all yeah, that. Yeah. Sparrow at the Cabo Airport, thirty-four dollars for two slices. Wait, wait. A, yeah. I'm not jugging. Thirty-four dollars. No, no. They ain't, they ain't, they ain't slacking at that Sabaros though. No, I've been worth thirty-four dollars. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. Is did, it, did you buy it? No, no, no. Okay, okay. That duty it. free though. They hit you with the duty free. Mm -hmm. Ooh, duty free. But y'all niggas overcharging. What duty are we freeing? Yeah. <laughs> They run the price. It costs more than it, I could get it over in the hood. What were you going to say? Sorry, before I interrupted the Sparrow uh, thing. I don't even know. The mall. Oh, I was going to say The Last of Us, the mall scene. I'm, I'm still bothered by that. How does she know the electricity and all the shit cracking? And how did Mushroom Boy not know that she'd been in there getting it cracking? For a week. For a week. I he mean, just, like, that was weeks. A bummer. Weeks, yeah. plural. Weeks, plural. Bro. Bro. Mortal Kombat woke him up. Bro, Come on. Nick, bro. I'm not buying it. I'm like, bro. damn, G. I'm glad they cut it off when they cut it off, though. <laughs> anyway. Was there any more orange chicken left over? That's all I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> in the freezer at the Panda Express. Tap you know, it, I'm in, tap it, I'm in. tap it. Nice no Auntie Annie's wouldn't have hurt either, mm. bro. You know what I mean? Was there a finish line in that mall, though? Auntie, that you John needs to use any more time at Auntie Annie's Auntie and not dealing with the bullshit. <laughs> get, get an Orange Julius and have a walk. Don't get into it with the security guard. I just want to know. <laughs> right, 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 right. How you arguing next to an Auntie Annie's? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the motherfuckers be slapping get you a pretzel, You don't job. smell that pretzel. To me, to get you some Mrs. Fields. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I do go to malls just for Mrs. Fields cookies. Mrs. I'm Fields. fat, if you haven't noticed. Oh, the, the Auntie Anne smell. Right? It does say different in the mall. Remember when they used to have the frozen shit that came out? It was not the same. I'll be honest, bro. Where's Mr. Fields at? In high school, the Mrs. Fields in, in, in 20 years ago hit different, bro. It did. It, it, they, they changed the recipe. They're going more frozen. Oh, uh, yeah, but that shit used uh, to be economical. Cold. Yeah, but. Finish. Uh, so I also want to know. You got foot lockers. Fucking up you got foot lockers. Yeah. You can even fuck with the champs. <laughs> yeah. Finish line was always oh, third. Crazy. Finish line was always it was, third. It was. It was no, always it was. third. It was. Like if they don't have the J's in the 14s at, at the foot locker, because I know I'm, if, yeah. if I go to Fox Hills Mall, lied. if I go to Fox in the, in the, yeah. But yeah, but in, in the South, champs had a little, you could get put, get some jumpers up too. Yeah, for sure. Y'all, they had that out here back in the day too? No, no we were. Okay. No. no. Shit, Fox Hills Mall. We had a spot called Just Feet, had a whole full Just court in the back. Wow. You feel me? You didn't let you put them on and test them out? I mean, no, nah, I don't remember all that. Maybe they did, though. I don't know. I, just, I, I just forget. Know it was a long happened. time ago. I smoked too much weed. I don't know. <laughs> what happened at the finish line? Was there, like, disrespect? Did, did she I, try that, to buy some jaws and they tried to push some Pumas John, on her? Like, why are you she, calling Jaws to I, come through with that? I like the idea of her being like, no, what do you think? It, the Jaws might be like, what do you think of these shoes? And gesturing towards Jaws and then playing, like, those fucking suck. No one buys those. And that's the altercation. Yeah, yeah. Hey, this nigga up here saying, your shoes weak, Jaws. <laughs> He showed up. Uh, he pulled up with his homies, you know what I'm saying? Nine guys. Mount up, boys. Nine guys. <laughs> nine guys <laughs> descended right. in Memphis. <laughs> you feel me? At finish line? Finish line. Pull up, John. No, I didn't take it back. Pull up. And then he said, right. when's he getting off? Or she getting off of work and pointing at the security yeah, and security. I hope like, it wasn't she. Friend. Whoever was. Okay, well, I thought it was she was the thing. Exactly. Like, you're, you're, yeah, that's a you're clouding our vision. Fine, 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 fine. I imagine like Paul Blart. like Yeah. Come here, John. Whatever, nigga. I'm point, not a like, basketball fan. Pulled, I'm a Warriors like, fan. Hummy. Feel me? I've never been in a mall and been like. <laughs> <laughs> I think we done, dog. <laughs> yeah. All right. Nas Reed is here. We're done with this. I don't want to hear any more from either of you. No more Demetrius? <laughs> no more. No more. We're going to start calling him Timmy, dog. You got to get <laughs> off that jaw life. You got to <laughs> come home, Demetrius. All right, man, so we got to see you do your thing against the Clippers. Somebody else who was watching was my personal GOAT, LeBron Raymond James Sr. Took time out of his day to tweet, Nas Reed got too much game. Mm -hmm. Did you see the tweet? And I just want to know, how does it feel to know that dudes like LeBron are watching you and they're rocking with your game like that? A lot of my friends sent it to me after the game. Uh, a few people, um, my family members and stuff like that. I mean, that's that's a feeling you you want growing up if you're you know, in the sport of basketball or if, or if any – Sporting is somebody that, you know, that great. Uh, notifying that your game is uh, special and it's definitely a special feeling. I mean, like I came into the league undrafted, so I'm trying to get recognized. For sure. And, you know, for, you know, one of the highest, if not the highest right now. I mean, 
to notice is, is, is a special feeling. So who's your favorite player all time? We always we do a go check when we, when we bring new guests onto the show. So all the time for me probably be Shaq. Okay. Oh, okay. Just okay. The dominance. Like, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I can't refute it. That's the first time we've heard that. <clears throat> yeah. Shaq doesn't get the love he deserves. For sure. For yeah. sure. Because I feel like he's a dude who could play in any era and dominate. Mm-hmm. Even today, obviously they they prioritize more small ball, but yeah. he's cookie. Was that who you were watching growing up? I know you move. You know the movement's different. Obviously, yeah. you got the guard skills, but you know. I mean, no, nah, I was Demarcus Cousins, Kevin Durant, and Joel Embiid when I was in you know college and high school. You know Harry Giles even. Um, just trying to like you know model my game after them with the, sure. the way they're able to put the ball on the floor and uh, put the ball in the hoop as well. So I just want to say. Two people on the show have gotten shout out for from LeBron. He's been shout out for his tweets before. You've gotten shout out. When do I get mine? Is it wrong to pander for it? Is it like embarrassing if I'm like, when do I get mine? No, I mean, no, I just, just put my head down and work. I might say it's something that I did. I'm pretty sure he's gotten to that level to where he got yeah that as well. So just been work saving my DMs. Zach. I might I've been saving it. I don't. <laughs> I want to DM Brian some some <laughs> real just wild shit. See if he'll unfollow me. But yeah. I, I might try and give you the code. I appreciate line. it. I appreciate. You gotta it. lean in, Zach. It's not happening, bro. <laughs> no, it's no, it's they popping, bro. We just gotta be cool. Yeah. Just chill. You know, enjoy the vibe. Shit. I'm trying to lean on the outside. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. So when did you fall in love with hoops? Like when was the moment too that you said I, I can be in the league as well? I was actually a football player. Like everybody in my family played football, and uh, I was like in fourth or fifth grade. I was coming from a, a school actually, and one of my friends he played basketball. He yeah. played every sport, but it was around basketball season, and I'm tall as hell. I'm like <laughs> <laughs> he pulled Fact. over. I was walking home. He pulled over. <laughs> uh, asked me that I wanted to play. That I ever play basketball. I'm like, nah. And then, um, I mean, since there, it's been crazy. And then when I, once I realized like, I could really do something with it, it was probably my freshman year of high school. Okay. I would say, like, you know, just watching all the guys before me and then, like, actually understanding the game and, you know, learning it and taking time to, you know, adjust and things like that, all that. It was just like, all right, there's something I think I could, you know, make a career out of or something like that. So you weren't really playing ball until like, before your freshman year of high school? Or, like, when did you? Probably about – Seventh grade. Wow. Damn. Damn. Did you, when did you stop playing football? When I went to high school. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. I, my high school didn't have a football team either. Okay. Oh, for real? Do you miss yeah. it at all? Did you miss yeah, it at all? For sure. Yeah. For sure. Like, I've, even now, like, you know, just video games, but I even play Madden more than 2K. Okay. Okay. So, what position? Like, yeah, what I, position I, was you playing? Yeah. Like, tight end? No, nah, I was a quarterback. quarterback. Oh, well, that shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was been... <laughs> I bet you had a cat too, though. Yeah. <laughs> for sure. For sure. When you were in high school, you were a member of the Jelly Fam. Mm-hmm. How was it dealing with, like, y'all was popping. Yeah. How was it dealing with that at a, at a young age? Did that pre- prepare you for being in the, in the league at all? As far as, like, uh, notoriety. And things of that nature because it's like, you know, you got a lot of kids looking up to you. You got a lot of so. people noticing that, you know, <clears throat> for, for me, it's, uh, uh, you know, I'm they call me Big Jelly. So it's yeah, like big jelly. I'm I'm out of my position doing that, you know. So, so uh, I mean, just like I, would say, like I said before, like the notoriety standpoint and, you know, the fame, I would say. Where did Hollywood come from? Honestly, I don't know. Honestly, I that's, that's the Instagram name I had since I was in like my sophomore year of high school. I remember when I saw like a, a high school clip of you and they had you as, you know, Hollywood. Yeah, no, I, I've seen that up. before. I, I've seen that before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's just, I just changed my name to that and I guess. You're the only one that made it to the L from the Jelly Fam. You know what I mean? Like, do you still rap with them dudes? You know yeah, what I mean? I still sure. cool? yeah. they got We got a few on the way. I mean, yeah. we got Javon. He's doing his thing. I think he just had 24 today. Okay. Uh, 24, 6 and a couple of other Jeez. stats. I mean. We got a couple guys overseas. Right? Everybody's grinding. Everybody's still, you know, we're still in communication with each other as well. So, I mean, everybody's just, you know, trying to get in there, get into the league their own way. You be in a game, like, I want to get loose and, you know, sometimes freak just, somebody sometimes. You feel me? Like, happens, get one off. Like, yeah, yeah. It's just like, that's just the stuff that I worked on and I've, you know, patented my game in, into. And, you know, I mean, sometimes you'll have flashes where I feel like, you know, I could just be me and do those type of things. And mm-hmm. there's times where, you know, you got to, it's time to lock in and, you know, actually for sure. buckle down. For sure. So I was watching the Clippers game. I think Plumlee was guarding you, but it looked like you kind of just got light in your eyes, started hitting them. Yeah. <laughs> started giving them some of that <laughs> shit. It's all little food. So you for you, when, you know, you, you <laughs> undersized for a centers, but how, how how great is it for you when you got a big dude like that on you that you know you can just cook I mean, yeah, on the perimeter? It's a, it's a crazy feeling. Especially, it's not the feeling when your teammates and your coach feel like, you know, 
you can do that. So it's like they're giving you that confidence and that mm-hmm. boost. So it's like it's like no other feeling like and then being different, you know, a lot of guys my size can't, you know, move how I move. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. I, I can't stay in front of me and things like that or, you know, ladder, whatever the case may be, shoot the ball on uh, space the floor. So I mean, just to be able to go at somebody multiple ways is just a gift. Speaking of gift, what age was it when you kind of realized this is a gift I could make it to the league? You know what's crazy, probably I would say like my freshman year of college. Interesting. Well, uh, really? so like throughout high school, like I felt like it was, it was like t- I can do something with it, but you know, I, I didn't feel like I was at the level that I needed to be at. You know? Interesting. You were like so much better than the players around you. Like it was blatantly obvious. I mean, when I'm watching you, that you, you stood out, mm-hmm. and you didn't see that at the time you know what i mean even lsu bacon yeah you know what i mean like i mean it's just like once i got to school it's a different mentality like i'm actually playing i'm playing dudes older than me i'm playing dudes mm-hmm. my age so i'm trying to actually get to you know the next level so it's like and it's, i'm only one step away right right so it's like i think that's when it's like all right it's time to buckle down and do what you got to do Makes sense. Well, let's talk about the the class of, of 2018 you play in the mcdonald's all-american game hold on i got to read off the list yeah. normally i would just memorize but i got to read off <laughs> <laughs> it's a long list, a long RJ list for Bear, sure. darius garland cam reddish bobo one of my personal favorites <laughs> similar oh, skills you you know, I, I, I love big dudes that they can handle. Yeah, for sure. So when I'm watching yeah, you, I just dude. smile because I just remember a time 15, 20 years ago when we try to do that and, and coach be like, no, you got to pass to the yeah. guard. Yeah. Like, no, I am the guard. Like, yeah. they threw I, your ass I'm the initiating the offense. I got the I rebound. Let's go. Way, you? Let's go. You already know. <laughs> Even Zion Williamson was a part of that. So when you look back on that class of 2018, who was your, your favorite player from that class? Cam Reddish. Easy. Mm. Easy. Everybody, everybody thought like Cam Reddish is gonna it's just his game was just different. Like yeah. I would like kind of seem similar to Paul George in a way. Like, okay. He's just a bucket. Like it's our class, I think like everybody would say that. And the thing is Cam is still young. He really hasn't gotten that. He that hasn't. Chance. Yeah. But it seems like every, you talk about Ann Edwards having that he you know he he got cooked by Cam was one of the only dudes to give him buckets. Yeah. So what do you think is going on just with his game and why it hasn't really translated to the league? Because everybody says the same thing about him. Mm-hmm. I think he, he probably hasn't had the opportunity <clears throat> or that, like I was saying before, like that belief where like, you know, someone someone on your team or someone, you know, your coach maybe, if that's the case. I mean, somebody is not believing in him in the way that, you know, they probably should. I mean, Cam I know is, is a, he's a dog, dog. Like, so, I mean, I wouldn't imagine – him translating that to the NBA mm-hmm. at the highest level. I think he will. I mean, I still got faith in him. Yeah, so. I do too. You went to LSU. What was sort of your recruiting like? Like what led you from, you know, where you grew up to LSU? So for me, I'm a relationships person. So yeah. <clears throat> like uh, I was really cool with Javante, Smart, Emmett Williams, Darius Day. So, you know, uh, Javante committed first, I believe. And then, you know, we I think we are at top 100 camp. Darius was on my team. And, you know, he talked about going there and Emmett did as well. So, I mean, we kind of like, you know, had that communication and that vibe and, you know, we kind of gelled together and we were like, once I knew like I would be comfortable over there and they made it seem like you know, I would be comfortable with them as well. So it was like, all right, that's probably a no brainer. And then I have some family down there. So, I mean, it was, it was just, like, I felt comfortable. And how was it playing for Coach Wade? Man, it was, it was great. I mean. He seemed like a good dude. Yeah, he, he is. It, I think the thing that frustrates me is like you see the NIL deals now yeah. and you're a little bit like, bro, he was just the way that people treat him frustrated me. So I, Visionary. I, yeah, visionary. I, just, I, 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 I thought Head that was of his bullshit, time, if you will. What was the LSU like for you as far as getting to be down there and, you know, pretty good basketball lineage from there? It was work. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, one thing, like, that Coach Wade did, like, he made sure that I was in the gym. So, like, it was work for me. I wasn't really outside doing, you know, too much. Uh, I mean, I was just in the gym working after class, getting in the gym, you know, things like that. I have Darius with me. That's one of my best friends. Right on. Uh, so, we, like, you know, when we're on the court together, we, we're locked in doing what we're supposed to. How did it feel culturally? You know, like, I've been in the Baton Rouge, I've been in Jersey. Two different planets might as well yeah. be. It's very different. How was that transition for you? It was good, actually, because, the you know, the people in Baton Rouge and Louisiana, period, they're very welcoming and nice people, you know, for sure. things of that nature. And I kind of feel like, you know, I, I've gotten, you know, some of that culture as well mm-hmm. uh, within my growth, you know, just how, being able to, you know, greet myself to someone or things, just, for you sure. know, just being different than how, you know, we're kind of seen in Jersey, New York mm-hmm. area. 
So you're at LSU, had a great freshman year, put your name in the draft. When you look back, do you do you regret coming out after your freshman year? And if you had to do it over again, would you have came back for another year or do you feel like you need to get out and get the, get this NBA bread? I would uh, do the same thing again. Okay. I mean, um, I just feel like, you know, everything happens for a reason. And, you know, I was able to you know put the work in the summer league, convert myself to a two-way, and then, uh, you know, went through a transition where I've, I've seen 11 people traded on the team before. So it's like, just being able to, you know, still be on that team. And then, you know, that just shows how much work that I put in to, and for me to be able to be implemented into a backup center role and things like that. So it's just like all of that contribute to the work that I put in and, you know, how hard that, you know, I believed in myself. And what's that like? You talk about being traded. We talk about group chats, all that type of stuff. You see 11 guys traded. Yeah, is, it, is it hard to develop a bond year. or whatever? You walk in like, damn, you don't never know, you know, like. It's not even, I, I didn't even really, like, my rookie year, I didn't really any, even understand any of that stuff. Like, I would say my rookie year vet, it was Gorgie Dang. And, like, mm, wow. he was teaching me a lot of the stuff. And then, like, to see him go and it's like, I'm about to be in that role. is just like, it was, it was a little heartbreaking for me. But at the same time, because of, of the relationship that we had, you know, off the course, so. I mean, it was like heartbreaking, but it's like at the time I'm still not understanding like what's going on. There's so many people being traded and it's like, I didn't know that, you know, an hour before trade deadline, that's when it really gets crazy. Like I didn't understand any of that at the time. So, And you see like dudes nervous and, you know. Yeah. I was mad how the energy I'm, was. I'm, like, I've never asked about it's, that. It's the, I mean, because we saw some dogs traded too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's everybody sure. kind of feeling like we just need to make it past this trade deadline. You feel me? Like. Yeah. Some people even like, you know, they're not they're probably not gonna play the same, you know. It's just a whole bunch of thought process to it and it's just like, bro, I, like if I do get traded, I hope it's for the better for yourself. Mm -hmm. It's anybody yeah. would you know, would hope. But it's scary though. It is scary. One last thing I wanna hit on, you went undrafted, obviously, and was that I know some guys, their agents will say, don't draft him. He wants to pick up a team. There's a team that he thinks he's the best fit for. Was that the case for you? Or how did you sort of select your destination afterwards? I got a couple calls um, yeah. from different teams. I just felt like, uh, you know, the Timbos offered me, you know, more money and then a better deal. So, you know, I mean, I went with that. Easy choice. And then, yeah. And then, <laughs> I mean, no matter where I went, I would have made the best of my situation. For so, that's for just so. what I believe in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about the Wolves. You had a career high. Didn't get the win. Yeah. No. But what you thinking? Like, you know, hey, we didn't get the win, but. I was out here cooking, my nigga. Like y'all didn't get the win. Hey, was it, was it, was it, was it, was like you know what I'm saying? Hey, y'all thirty. But you look in the mirror, like you was baking, though. You feel me? Like wasn't any of that? I mean, yeah, for sure. But at the end of the day, it's like we're in one of the biggest stretches in the season. So it's like that's something I was also thinking. Like you know, we needed that win. Uh, I feel like you know, we we did what we were supposed to do. We just made a few mistakes, and you know, we learned from it in the Clipper game. So. For sure. So you, you dropped that thirty, but. In true Hooper fashion, I know you's mad that, you know, it's like the 30 was cool, but I want that 40 piece. Yeah. So was, what's, what's it, you know what I mean? Because, you know, I'm watching the game, me. you know, you, you know, you miss a free throw, whatever it may be, but you got a 30 piece. Like, yeah. I just felt good. Uh, I wanted to get 40. I mean, I, that was, that was uh, my first time, you know, in the position to get 40 in the NBA. So, you know, I was kind of thinking about it and things like that, you know, Ant telling me not to think about it, you know. <laughs> you know, just oh, got so it. was in your ear, though? They knew yeah, you was, like, everybody you know, knew you, had, you was yeah, on one. You yeah, feel yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. They, they knew all, they knew what it was. But, you know, they were just telling me, like, you know, you must see in and out and stuff like that because you're thinking about it. Just just hoop, bro. I'm like, all right, all right I got you, I got you. Did, right. did you peak up, like, at the – oh, yeah, yeah, sure. of course. Yeah. I was always curious. How many points you had? I didn't know exactly. Like, after the first quarter, I think I had like 18 in the first quarter. I'm like, I'm looking up. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm going for 40. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. So, so, so you mentioned, and he seems like the funniest dudes of all time. We see the interviews and, and what he's like kind of from our perspective being in the media. But what, what's he like as a teammate? And what's that dynamic like for you? Do you be able to play with a guy who's 21 mm -hmm. Who you know? He, we see the Jordan meme with the half Jordan face, the half Ant face, and but he's really coming into his own yeah. now as a as an all star superstar in this league. Sure, I mean Ant, man, he's special. He's different, and that's on and off the court. Like he's him, no matter what type of situation he's in. Like he's gonna smile. He's gonna he's gonna impress you in so many different ways. So it's like you know to see him and come into his own. Uh, he's in his third year now, I believe. So. To see him to come in his own in such a quick time is is crazy, man. This is like I've been with him all three of his years, and each year has been 
a step towards growth, and he's going to be, a, a, I think, a, a great leader on this team. So Ant, Ant thinks that he can w literally win everything. He thinks he's the best at everything, no matter what it is. As he should. <laughs> Y'all do ever get on Madden or 2K, and have you given that work before? <laughs> no, I haven't gotten on Madden or 2K, but we play uh, Warzone. Oh. Uh, he's good. He, he's good in that. I ain't going to lie. He, he be working out in there. Like, so he's telling the truth. <laughs> okay. yeah. I got to know, you've been in the league for a minute now. Who is the biggest trash talker you've encountered? Like, you're a very laid back guy. So I realize you were probably not bringing it on yourself in any ways mm -hmm. necessarily. But who is the biggest trash talker? Like, the biggest trash talker that I've encountered, like, probably be like Bobby Portis. Really? Wow. Really? I could see that. Like, I, I've seen him say some crazy stuff. <laughs> you like, talking to himself or to you, though? I feel like, like Portis. Like, he's scoring. He's talking to everybody. Like, he's, I love that. He's talking, he talking to, to y'all. Oh, right, right. <laughs> Whoever, like, he's talking to everybody. So it's just like, and it's another, you know, competitive spirit. It's like, gives you, you know, another reason to go back at him. For sure, for sure. And, um, yeah, he, he definitely makes you respect him, though. Like, I feel that. Was there a, like, big name guy that kind of gave you a welcome to the league moment when you first got in? No, rookie year, I could not stop Porzingis. You couldn't stop Porzingis? Oh, man. Was that? Unicorn. It just from half court. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like, how am I supposed to go? I'm looking at coach, like, <laughs> only from the half court. Like, do I, you know, do I come up or do yeah. I? Because <laughs> like, I, I think I came up, like, a few times and he's, he, got, he drove by me. I think he had, like, 40 that game. I'm not going to lie. How many did you get? I mean, how many did he give you? Probably, like, Cool, like 25, 30. Oh. Yeah, you know. So he had 25. I appreciate yeah. the honesty. You, know, that, yeah, you could have been like I was a rookie. So right, right, right. You're really supposed to do that. Yeah. Right, right, right. What's, right, co right. what's Coach saying in that? Like, like he, just He's not really saying too much because he's shooting from half court. Like, yeah. Can't what anybody do anything like, about like, that? Yeah. You feel me? I'm just trying to, I don't know, I'm trying to, trying to do something, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> trying to swim, man. You feel me? So you got to play with Cat for these past few years. Both of y'all are, are bigs that like to get buckets from the perimeter. Mm -hmm. So what did you learn from playing with him and just, just his style and, and how he's out there on the court? You know, if you watch the games and stuff, even, even now, like, he's talking to me, um, you know, telling me what he sees from, you know, uh, players that's, you know, not in the game, but watching uh, perspective. I mean, you know, like I said before, he's boosting my, my confidence, uh, just telling me, like, you know, to stick with and things of that nature. I mean, Cat's a great player. He's from Jersey, so you already, you mm -hmm. know, you already get that, um, you have that, you already have that vibe. And then this is like, you know, what you, when you see him on the court, it's like, like you said about me, he's doing stuff that you're not supposed to be doing at that size and mm -hmm. shooting it crazy, like from three. We play a lot of uh, shooting games out the practice and stuff. It's like, I cannot beat this man. And it's like, <laughs> it, it makes me mad because this is like, bro, I only, I think I only beat him like a couple times, like two, three times, bro. Like, it makes me mad, but it gets, it gets me um, competitive. So, you see a lot of the, you know, players hooping with like, you know, uh, OGs in off season, like, you know, working on a, on a game or whatnot. What's the OG that you want to, you know, work with off season? Probably like Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah. Just with the footwork. The yeah. Like, you know, a guy who's coordinated, he's able to move his feet. I mean, like, he can score at the rim at will. Dream shake, like you said. I mean, it just, you know, I think he's uh, working with Seguna a little bit. Mm -hmm. You know, you mm -hmm. see his, you his see work, it, yeah, yeah. you know. So it's just like, I think that's somebody I would, if not him, probably most likely Shaq. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, 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 yeah. Did you ever get to chat with Shaq at all, the LSE yeah. connection? Yeah, I've, I've, a little bit, but, you know, his son Sharif is like one of my closer friends. As for well. Yeah, for sure. So I've, I've seen him around. Okay, okay. Uh, Shaq's a funny dude, man. Uh -huh. He's he too old to be that funny. I'll just yeah. say that. <laughs> so, what was it like winning that playing game? And did you think it was going to go <laughs> like that viral? You know what I mean? I mean, and I'm not mad at the celebration. I think motherfuckers should celebrate everything. Yeah. Fuck what people think. You know what I'm saying? But, like, how'd you feel about that? I mean, it was it was a great feeling. I mean, and then to see that, you know, it's a man who's passionate about winning. Mm -hmm. You know, he's came into, you know, a team where, you know, winning wasn't too common in our past year. So that's like a, a milestone for himself, I would say. I mean, I, I ain't mad at him at all. I mean, you you, you do what you got to do. But, you know, from a winning standpoint, I mean, I, that was a great win it's a, against a great team. And mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it just showed the growth that we had throughout that whole season. So that was a great win. I want to ask, is there, well, like, what's your favorite move, right? Like, what is your favorite move, and when did that move kind of get into your bag? Probably in and out. I got that in high school, man. Uh, you got so many great guards from Jersey. Curry, yeah. Isaiah Briscoe, mm. uh, 
Trey, Trey Duvall, he's in that area as well. I mean, Javon, Jordan Walker. Like, you know, you just got so many guards, and they kind of – that's kind of like a patent move in Jersey, uh, in and out. Uh, I think it's just the way you set it up, and, you know, I think the way you work on it, it's just a move that, you know, can't really stop. Is there, like, a summer run that you guys all have? Because I know that, like, there's a big L.A. run that they used to be a huge thing here. I missed this past summer, but – like in Jersey, we're we're getting it. We're in the lab, like yeah. we're getting it, and it's no fouls. Like we're getting it. Like, right, nobody call foul. Uh, what happens if you call foul? They just keep playing. I mean, they respect it, but you're not gonna call foul because it's just like I'm gonna get it back. Yeah. Who yeah. are some guys in the league? Oh, well, in that in that league that we we may may not know about, but that go crazy. You feel me? Like in the, in the, we I didn't hear about the Jersey run. A lot, man. It's like I think it's a kid named Brody. Uh, it's like a lot of local guys like who just come in and wants to who Jess, uh Jesse Jones. I think I probably made a heard of him fillet. Oh, uh, for sure. He go yeah. he, he actually got game, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like I saw you had a run with him. Mm -hmm. He can he can actually play for yeah, real. He can, you know? he, yeah. Yeah. Just a lot of guys, man, who just, you know, everybody's just trying to it's just genuine like hooping. We just we're just trying to hoop, yeah. bro. Like, yeah. So when you look around the league now, you got a chance to play against all the superstars in the league. If you had to build a franchise you got to pick one non Timberwolf. I know, I know you would give it to one of your brethren, but you got to pick one non Timberwolf to build a franchise around. Which player are you picking right now? Jason Tatum. I mean, wow, okay. he's killing right now. I mean, he's killing right now. That's all I got to say for it. Like, he's from St. Louis. So yeah, bro. He's, he hey, he's he all in the city, time. bro. Like we love him out there, dog. Tatum's you know, he's killing. Like he, yeah, and he's you know he's he seems like a great leader, great player. You know. Great hairline. Uh, yeah. You know, I mean? <laughs> somebody that, you know, he's somebody yeah. I definitely would um, follow. They talk about the game slowing down. When did that happen for you? Because like you, like you were saying, you play Chris Epps, he's yeah. cooking. People kind of forget that like he was a problem when he first was in the league. When did it start to slow down? Was there a guy that you went against that you were like, man, I got to catch up. I got to get stronger. Uh, what were some of those moments when you first got into the league? Just seeing, you know, guys develop and having breakout years and things like that. You look at guys like Shea, like I'm pretty sure the game slowed down for him about two like two years ago maybe. And yeah. you could just see like him going from what he was into the past two years has been crazy. And then you know, he's all-star. And so I think like um, just the confidence, getting the confidence and then um, being able to have that confidence and then, you know, go somewhere to, with it for years and years and years having it. Like something similar to kind of what Shaq said the other day. But yeah, I think that the confidence is where it starts. Is there an arena you love playing in and is there an arena you hate playing in? I love playing here. I here play. in LA? Yeah. So for sure, for sure. Then, can I ask Clippers or Lakers? Yeah, see, I was, that's the question. It doesn't matter. Man. Oh, but they do. It's the court though. Like. Yeah, but like, <laughs> but there's Drake's at one game and Drake's not at the other game. Yeah, that's true. You got yeah, like Floyd Mayweather. For sure. For sure. Yeah. 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 I would say, is there an arena you don't like going to be it loud, the travel day? I actually like away games, to be honest. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really have an arena that I hate. I respect that. So everybody's like, you know, vying for playoff positions now. It's getting, you know, we winding down kind of, you know what I mean? Who would y'all want to play? The Grizzlies, Nuggets, you know what I mean? Kings, mm -hmm. like. What matchup, what team do you think y'all match up the best with? Grizzlies. Yeah, okay. Grizzlies. That's, and that's I want, yeah, uh, I need that rematch. I love hearing that. People said they want the Grizzlies. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, you know, that's a team to beat. Like, you know, with in that, in that playoff environment, they're, they're young and they're they're active. And then you got stars like Ja and Jaron who are growing to be great leaders as well. I mean, and we just match up pretty well. Is Dylan Brooks like Bobby Portis? Like where he's, you just kind of hear yeah, him the whole game? I can see that. I feel like we played them so much and it's like, you kind of don't notice because you, you play them so much. It tunes time. out yeah. a little. Okay. So how does, you know, regular season basketball compare to playoff basketball? It seems like it's two completely different worlds. Yeah. I got to face this team four to seven yeah. times yeah. now. I'm tired of looking at these dudes. These dudes know my moves. I know their moves. Different. So for you, just what are those differences like? I was, that's crazy because I was on the way here. I was just telling my friends that like how like every game is a different type of scout or coverage or Whatever it, it, it like whatever they're trying to throw out there to, for it to be different, it's just like you got to try and stop it. But you're playing the same team four times, so it's just like Whoa. how can how much more can we be different? Right, right, like, right. And you know it's always competitive, like you said before. The scout is like the right hand, and um, it's like something that I would say as for players, 
you know, playing against the same teams and stuff like that, like, as your years go on, you start to understand and get accustomed to what that player is going to do. Like, you might, oh, he's going to go right every time. You know, mm-hmm. just, you know, playing them uh, so many times. and uh, But the atmosphere, playoff atmosphere, as my first playoffs last year, and playoff atmosphere is crazy. Like, it's like nothing, especially in Memphis. Yeah. Playoff, like, yeah. That's, a, that's a dangerous spot to play in the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> How does it feel on court, like the physicality and whatnot? You know, people talk you, about how that, you know, ramps up a lot. You yeah. feel me? You can. It feels different after the game. Like, yo, yeah. we was in a war. You feel yeah. me? Wrestled. That's because everybody's putting it on the line. Like, it's yeah. win or go home. So, yeah. everybody's playing, playing their head off. Do you feel like officiating and whistles are different? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The whole yeah, Fans play to see the, to the game. So, you know, kind of – or the players, I should say. So you kind of got to let some things go and, you know, some things might not. But uh, for the most part, it's like, it's completely different. Huh. Like the whole game is completely different. So when you look at the Western Conference this year, for me, it seems like this is like the craziest I've seen. Like you could lose a couple games, go from a four seed to literally out the playoffs. Just from team to team and even looking at the Suns now with KD, is this the toughest Western Conference that you've seen during your time in the league? Yeah, I would say so. For one, you, I've never seen Kevin Durant in the Western Conference. <laughs> played against him in the Western Conference. And then, like, you know, I think a couple teams just got even better. Uh, and then, uh, you know, everybody's so close, you kind of have to win. Mm. It's, it's it's crucial to win, especially right now in this 19-game, uh, 20-game stretch. I mean, it's crucial. Everybody's trying to get in home court advantage or, you know, trying to get in without having to play in the plan because, you know, yeah. playing in the plan and then you having to lose is like we were this close. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of ladies to look at. It. I mean, for us, I feel as though the way we, we played in the plan, it was kind of like a growth a growth thing. And then now this year, we're not trying to trying to be in the plan, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it's definitely a tough, tough, tough uh, season for every team in the West this year. Does it feel like it's two seasons before All-Star and after All-Star? Like it kind of changes a little bit after All-Star, All-Star? Yeah. And then I would say for just for like a body standpoint, you just, you know, you feel – back you feel you feel back like you were in the beginning of a new season so mm-hmm. for that that for one and then on top of your head it's also it's like dang like we just played a whole season it's almost we only got 20 games left it's like bro where did the season go like i want more games like <laughs> really? yeah it's like it's it's i mean for me at least i mean yeah. it's it's crazy does how the, different it is does this year's west feel it feels like really competitive as a fan and everyone's so bunched up does it feel like that as a player yeah, like like you go on a tear of wins, yeah. all of a sudden you're you know right in the middle, or you lose a couple, you go right to the back. It's crazy because it's like like I said before, like everything you have to win, like yeah. it's a must win. The this pressure's is, on, yeah, like you know you got everybody watching and things of that nature, so it's definitely competitive. The show is called Out of Pocket, and I I gotta ask, what is the most out of pocket thing you've seen in the league? The most out of pocket thing, yeah. That you could say legally. You could say, say yeah. <laughs> Is there a teammate that doesn't shower? There's, you know, everyone's, heard, everyone's <laughs> in the stories like about guys like don't bring clothes. Yeah. Like I think it was AI used to not pack luggage and just show up in the city, buy a suitcase, buy the clothes, that's, go to the next city. Yeah, that's probably something. That's what James Johnson used to do. Like. <laughs> no kidding. Yeah. Really? That's yeah. wild. That's so big balling. Fur coat. <laughs> <laughs> no bags. Like. <laughs> We're going to Miami, so you know what time it is. And this is like <laughs> crazy, bro. Like, for one time, um, we were in Houston, I believe. Um, we went shopping, and then it's like uh, me, Jalen Noel, I think Josh Kogi. I think this is my second year in the league. Um, we go shopping. I'm like, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm on my second year, so I'm not spending too much. Yeah, grab one pair of shoes, maybe. He's like, that's all you want. I'm like, yeah. Like, <laughs> he's like, nah. You know, keep going shopping. I'm like, all right. So I picked up a few more things. He's like, that's it. And I'm like, bro, what? <laughs> like, he making you spend your bread, dog? Like, like my bro, nigga. what? <laughs> and you know, that's that was that was. I'd probably say something like that. Like, I'm like, bro, you just spending, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> where is it even ending up at that point, too? Right? Like, end up in a closet, bottom yeah, of the closet. Like, but. Especially for him, it's like. He wears so much different stuff, and you yeah. never even know if you get to yeah. the stuff that he he just bought. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right, right. 
So we know you got the Lakers coming up. I'm going to need you to say that 30 piece. <laughs> for the Kings. Right. Save it for the Kings, right, please. Right, right, right. Please, bro. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Get you play, get a King please. 40 piece, bro. You <laughs> feel me? But come on. Please. Give him a nice cool Everybody. 20, you know. Yeah, keep it at 20 for him. Hey, we'll take, you know, cool 20. You know what I'm saying? Everybody got to get to work. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> we appreciate having you on the show, man. Oh, man. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank through. you for coming through. For sure. New episodes drop every Tuesday. You can get them on YouTube. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Like the video. Comment below. And if you want to listen to this, you can get it on Spotify, iTunes, or wherever you get your podcasts.